Hello, it's me, Joe, again. I'm back with another exciting video about the table of time. Today we're going to look at how to play and count the table of time while playing the snare drum. I'm a drum teacher residing in London in the UK, and uh, I find that a lot of people starting out with the drums uh, don't really get a good handle on some of the basic stuff. It's not very glamorous, uh, it's not very exciting, but if you know this stuff well, I think it sets you up to be a very good drummer. If you've watched my previous videos about the subject, I've shown you how to count quarter notes, eighth notes, triplets and sixteenths, also known as crotchets, quavers, uh, quaver triplets, and semi-quavers, silly English names for those things. Go back and watch those videos if you haven't, because that will help you to understand what we're doing here today. We're going to look at playing the quarters, eighths, triplets and sixteenths on the snare drum as single strokes, meaning we're going to play alternating strokes with each uh, subdivision. I'm going to do everything with a right hand lead. Uh, if you're left handed, or once you've got the hang of the right hand lead, you can swap and learn how to do this with a, a left hand lead. Or if you're a lefty, start off with left hand lead if you like, and then swap to right hand lead. Try and learn how to do this with a right hand lead and a left hand lead. Let's look at quarter notes, starting off uh, with some counting. We're just going to go one, two, three, four. Let's get the click on. I'm at 60 BPM because we're going to work on everything nice and slowly. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I think you get the idea. Okay, now, uh, a big part of this exercise is being able to verbalize. So I know this is all very basic, but uh, if you can sit and relax and count and play your snare along to the click nice and accurately, it's a great exercise to do. If it feels really easy, it's still a great exercise to do. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add the feet in turn. First we're going to play the bass drum with the quarter notes. So we're going to go like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now what happens here is if I'm playing my bass on the one, two, three and four, the one and three uh, coincides with my right hand, but the two and four coincides with my left hand if I'm playing this as single strokes as I am at the moment. Uh, and that can be a little bit challenging, so th that's the first little challenge that this brings. Uh, you need to make sure that your bass drum and your left hand happen at the same time. Right foot, left hand don't always want to play nicely together, and learning how to do that accurately is super valuable. So let's play with the click. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. Next, we're going to play the left foot on the hi hat, okay, uh, with the click 60 BPM. One, two, Three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. And again, you may find that your right hand and your left foot have a little bit of an argument or disagreement as to where the sound needs to go, and you'll, you'll hear some flamming there. You'll hear that the notes don't always happen together. So being able to play the quarter notes like that, and the rest of these exercises too, get you to work on a little bit of coordination between the hands and feet, especially the opposing hand and foot. Next we're going to play some eighth notes. Just to remind you, the eighth notes are counted one and two and three and four and. The click is going to click on the numbers and the ands are going to happen in between the clicks. Uh, I'm going to play again single strokes. So my right hand is going to be playing all the numbers, my left hand is going to be playing all the ands. Again, if you're in a left hand lead, that's reversed. So it would look like this. One and two and three and four and. One and two, three and four and. So now my right hand, as it's playing all of the numbers, uh, is going to be coordinated with my right foot. So that's relatively straightforward compared to the single strokes because all my right hand strokes go with right foot strokes like this. One and two and three and four. Let's get the metronome on. That's the truth, the, the truth teller. Three, four. 
Next, I'm going to play the quarter notes with my left foot. One, two, three, four. And uh, this time, my right hand and my left foot are going to be working together on all four of those quarter notes. So again, listen out very carefully. Uh, for some of you, that might be pretty straightforward, but for a lot of people, it'll be uh, noticeably flammy. It can be quite difficult for the left foot and the right hand to work nicely together. So listen carefully. Uh, it, it, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect, but just listen uh, carefully to how coordinated they are and gently, gently, the more your awareness grows uh, and you practice it, you can get those uh, limbs to line up nicely. At least most of the time it seems to work for me. Three, four, one and two and three and four and one and two, three and four and one and two and three and four and and two, and three, and four, and. Okay, that's your eighth notes done. Okay, and again, take some time to practice that. Uh, this looks very simple and easy, but if you're a beginner, if you just started out drumming, and even actually people who are a little bit further down the road, I have lots of students come to me um, with some considerable experience who can't do some of these simple exercises, and when they learn how to do them, uh, they find that actually it has a very beneficial effect in terms of uh, straightening out some coordination issues and, and uh, expanding the mind's awareness of, of how we sound as well. Next, believe it or not, we've got triplets. Now triplets, are uh, because they're groups of three, are going to move the lead from right to left to right to left, meaning the number one will be right-handed, the number two will be with the left hand, the number three with the right hand, the number four with the left hand. One and a two and a three and a four and a. And again, a little bit of a coordination challenge in that for some of you. Uh, the bass drum is on one and three, coordinated with the right hand, but on two and four, it's coordinated with the left hand. And again, you want to listen out very carefully and try and uh, relax your way through any flamming. Try and uh, hear the flamming and allow your body to really synchronize the right foot and the left hand. Okay, so again, click on 60 as always. Two, three, four. One and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a the four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two three and a four and a. Same thing again left foot playing the quarters this time and again notice the coordination when on the one and three the right hand needs to coordinate with the left foot two three four one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and the last part of this, the last subdivision is 16th notes. And again, we're back into a situation where the right hand will be playing all the numbers. So when I play with the bass drum with my right foot, I'm going to be hitting uh, right hand and right foot together. Uh, that should be easy to coordinate for most people. Um, but when I play with my left foot, it's going to be right hand, left foot all the time. Two, three, four. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E. I'll swap straight to the left foot. Three E and a four E and a one two three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two. Once you can play each one of the subdivisions comfortably with a foot accompanying on the quarter notes, with the metronome feeling nice and accurate, um, we're going to put together a four bar sequence where we play the quarter notes, eighth notes, triplets and sixteenth, um, one after the other, uh, first starting off with the bass drum. 
and uh, we'll just run that maybe four times, and uh, that's your exercise for today. After we've done the bass, then the hi-hat. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and one and a two and a three and a four. One e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and one and a two and a three. Four and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one, two. Three, four, one and two and three and four and one and a two and a three and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one, two, three, four, one and two and three and four and one and a two and a three and a four and a two e and a three e and a left foot. And two and three and four and one and a two and a three and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one two three four one and two and three and four and one and a two and a the four and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one two. Three, four, one and two and three and four and one and a two and a three and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one, two, three, four, one and two and three and four and one and a two and a the four and a one e and a two e and a three. That's it. Table of time played as single strokes on the snare drum. In the next few videos, or the ones that I make about this subject, I'm going to show you how to uh, open this up and really use uh, this knowledge and understanding to uh, move around the kit and just to develop a solid sense of timing, as well as maybe a little bit of um, a good understanding of the, the way these things apply in playing grooves and fills on the drum kit. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that uh, interesting or maybe you found it boring as hell, but realize it would be useful to learn. Uh, either way, please leave me a comment and let me know what you thought uh, for good or ill. Of course, hit the old uh, subscribe button if you want to be informed about future videos. Uh, give me a thumbs up, like thingy bob if you enjoyed this and want to help other people find my stuff. And of course, um, go away and practice.